So here's a quad with the HD system by DJI. And here's five things that I love about it. I'll start with a weird one. Something I really like about the goggles isn't their image quality or range or any of that sort. It's that it's actually very easy to put them on. It's a bit tedious to put on the antennas and get it out of the bag, true. But once it's out of the bag and with the antennas attached, you can actually just use one hand Put the strap at the back of your head and just slide them on and they fit. There's no fussing around on your face because the margin where uh, your focus is good is quite large compared to something like the Fat Sharks that really needed both of your hands to position it just right on your face where you got a sharp image. These just sit one hand, plop, and within a second or two, you're ready to go. The next thing I have is size. I mean, it's not the smallest. In the analog world, we have micro cameras and the video transmitters are also very tiny for, for racing. But this thing is as big as a 30 millimeter stack. And unfortunately for some, it's enclosed in this aluminum box and it's very self-contained. It's not easy to put in every frame. You really have to have a specific kind of frame to fit it in. But I don't think it's, it's giant. And the fact that it's self-contained and theoretically easy to swap between quads with just having one connector to deal with is pretty cool, I think. Another thing I really like and something that shows that DJI is all about design is how the system records uh, concurrently on both the onboard air unit and the goggles as soon as you touch the button. Uh, not only that, if you connect, and you should, the air unit to the flight controller, um, it actually will start recording as soon as you arm the quad and then stops as soon as you disarm. This way you don't have to think about it and it's close to impossible to lose any kind of footage from a good flight. The thing I should have probably started with is image quality, but it has many facets. Uh, the displays themselves are great, the optics are great, um, it feels like you're sitting in a in a cinema it's it's really marvelous the refresh they claim it's 120 hertz i can't really like tell 60 from 120 to be honest but uh, the unit when it overheats goes into the low power setting and the uh, refresh is uh, lowers to 30 and you can definitely tell that but you know 120 or 60 i can't really tell I have a top of the line analog system, the FedShark HDOs and the rapid fire module. And in terms of refresh, this is at least on par with it, but I would say better. I've had my Mavic and I've always been impressed by the cache that you get on your phone while you're flying. Um, I've lost an SD card one day and uh, I just used the 720p downlink video directly in my, in my video project and nobody really noticed. So uh, the thing is, 
you could do the same here. Like if you lose a quad, you still get really lovely footage. Uh, there's a problem with the focus mode, really like preferring the center of the image and using lower bitrate on the sides, which doesn't look that great um, if you know you end up in this specific situation, but it's still way better than if you're left with just your uh, analog video DVR. As for the quality of the video recorded directly onto the air unit, the onboard DVR, it's a mixed bag. I mean, it's definitely not competing with GoPro footage and that's like including the Session 5s. The use case I would say for this camera or for this recorder is when you're racing and you want to show off your qualifier or your finals run and you don't want to add more weight to your quad, then this is good enough. I would say it's on par with things like Runcam Split or the their, their separate cameras. Uh, Runcam 5, I think, now is, is the most recent one. But it's definitely not competing with GoPros at all. So if you're freestyling, you definitely need a separate camera. The last point is a bit speculative because it all depends on how well the system does in a racing environment, which is kind of tricky right now without a ground station available. I'm not going to go too much into it because that's something for uh, an upcoming video. But if the system is viable in a racing environment, then it's going to be really easy switching channels. This is done simply on the goggles, you switch a channel and then the air unit also switches to the new channel that you prefer. This is something that not even after six years of racing the analog world has. Team Black Sheep, the makers of the Unify VTX and the Crossfire radio uh, transmitter of choice um, have come up with a new uh, receiver goggle module that uh, allows this by like really doing uh, crazy integration work where the goggle module talks to the uh, transmitter over Wi-Fi, the transmitter then you know gets it to the receiver that switches it over a serial link to the VTX and it all works hopefully seamlessly but again it's still not out there so this thing is definitely the first and the most convenient way to switch channels. So this was the five things that I love about the DJI HD FPV system and I really, really like the system, as you can tell. But next time, uh, I'll do a similar video, if time allows, because it, it's really uh, hard to produce these. Uh, I will do five things that I dislike about the system. Um, I say dislike, not hate, because I don't hate the system. It's really, really good. But next time, we'll talk about the, the downfalls of, of the thing. Um, so subscribe and uh, I'm looking forward to producing another one of those videos. Take care.